Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, I'm going to go over the waveform. I've done this before, but I'm also going to display the current value in a number field or a float field, and I'm going to show the min and max values that were currently displayed within the chart. Not for the whole time, just for what's currently on the waveform. I'm going to start in the Nection. And in this video, I already have the Nection set up. At least I have the objects on the screen. I have three float fields, or X fields, that refer to a float, and they have a, have a decimal point. I have the X2 here in the middle. It's going to show the current temperature, and I have that to four decimal places. And then I have the minimum and maximum temperatures that are currently displayed on the waveform, and those are going to be to two decimal places. And then I have the waveform itself. And right now I don't have it doing anything, or I mean there's no code involved with it. And for this one, there won't be any code. But just in case you're not familiar with the waveform, I am going to show you the command to add data. I'll also have the editor stick something in here that tells other people to skip to whatever time period it becomes to do the Arduino work. Now just so I can show you how to how to add data to the waveform, we have to have it change. So I'm going to add a variable and a timer. For the variable, we want it set to a number, which sets the way it defaults. And we can have it set to zero. That's fine. For the timer, I'm going to change the time from 400 milliseconds to 50, just because I want the waveform to generate quickly. Then the code isn't very much for this. Every time the timer executes, we're going to increment that va0.val the variable that we have. If the VA value gets above 170, we're going to have it drop down to 50. So it'll be like a saw wave between 50 and 170. And the reason I selected those values is for the waveform itself, it has a width of 230 and a height of 200. And the pixels, or the size that you make it, is the size of the waveform. So if you were to have a value greater than 200, it would go off the waveform. It would go above it. And then our width is 230. So it'll start on this side, on the right side, and it'll move over to the left. And once it hits 230, or we have the 230th variable in there, or point, then it's going to look like it's moving back to the right, or back to the left. And you set that up, up here right here where I have it right to left. You can have it right to left, left to right, or a line on the right. In other words, it would start over here and the data would just keep going this way. But we're just going to do right to left. And then the command to do it, and I'm going to retype this in, is the word add. And then you put the object ID, and the object ID is of the waveform. And that's right here, 1. And then you have to put the channel. And on a waveform, once again, you have channels, and you can denote if it has one, two, three, or four channels. And with more channels, you can just have more data on the display. And then you can make each channel whatever color you want. So you could be plotting like four temperature sensors or something on the same screen. But in our case, we're just going to have one. It is zero base, so one channel one is actually the zero base channel. And then the data. So we have add one comma zero comma va zero dot val. And now we'll run this and you'll see it working just in the debug. And you can see it started at zero, but when it hits 170, it's going to go down to 150. and 200 would have been up there. Now you can see how it's starting to move. The point of adding the timer and the VA0 dot um, variable is just to show you this add one comma zero comma VA0 dot val. We're gonna have to do that in the Arduino and send the values up. So now I'm gonna delete the variable and the timer. And I'll upload this to the Nection but I'm not going to show it to you because it's not really going to do anything until we get the Arduino configured. Now in the Arduino I have a standard setup that I use for all of my videos, or for most of them, 
Uh, there will be a link down in the description if you want to go over how I set it up. I'm setting my async delay to run every 50 milliseconds just like it was in the next and that way we can update the waveform quickly. In order to record the min and max values, I'm going to have to set up an array of values because I know my display is 230 um, spots wide or pixels or however you want to think about it. The, the graph is 230. So what I want to do is I want to keep track of the last 230 places. So I'm going to create an array called volt array and I could make it 230, the exact size I need. But just in case I count a little above or a little below for some reason, I'm going to change it to 40. I'm not doing anything else in this one. I should have plenty of space, so we'll do it. And we're going to keep each spot in the array is going to be a long instead of an integer. The reason I'm going to need that long is I'm going to four decimal places on my float. But the Nexion doesn't understand um, floating point numbers, so that x float in the Nexion is just a placeholder, that period. So we're going to keep the voltage in the Arduino large. So 5 volts is going to equate to 50,000, um, the value of 50,000. So when we send it up, the decimal place will be in the right spot. So instead of integers, I have to have longs. I think this will make sense as I get going through the, the math and when I collect the, the voltages. The other thing is I don't want to have to keep moving the variables in it, so I'm going to have a pointer. And it's going to point to the current position in the area that we just wrote the value. So if the editor can do something here and maybe bring up a little chart, pretend like we have 10 variables, 0 through 9. And we're going to keep adding to those, so the second variable, which would be spot 1, might be the spot we just last put it. So then and then we would go 3, 4, 5, up through 9. And then the next time through it, we'll start overriding those variables. But all we care about is 10. So after we've gone back through the list again, and we're, let's say we're on number 5 now, which would be array spot 4, and so we'll continue to cycle that pointer around, and we'll always point to the current spot that we last wrote a value. And then that way we know how to count through it when we go to display or to get the minimum and maximum values. I'll try to go over this again as we get to that point. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my voltage, my minimum voltage to its highest value it can be, which is 50,000. And I'm going to set my volt maximum value down to zero. So that way we can check that when we go through it and we won't, we should start right off with a good value. And then in the setup, we're going to load the, the array with values. So we're going to have, we're just going to use x as an integer, and we're going to count to 240, or we're actually 239, because if it's less than 240, once it hits that, it will exit the loop. So we're just going to set every value equal to 25,000, which is 2.5 degrees. And then this way we have a nice loaded array, so that when we start collecting data at point zero, we already have values in there because the array is long and we're just selecting random memory for it or letting Arduino select the memory and we don't know what's currently in those cells. There's nothing else we have to change in this lower section because we just want to run that delay function every 50 milliseconds. Now over in the delay function, I have it toggling that uh, the LED on pin 13. It just lets me know it's running. Since I'm using a Nano, I, I know that that pin 13 is the onboard LED. And then on pin A0, I have a potentiometer, and I'm just going to run that between um, 0 and 5 volts. Now to get that to ratio, because I know that my screen, the, the points on my display are 0 to 200. That's the height of the waveform. So I need to get my voltage in converted to 0 to 200. So I take that, that 0 to 5 volts, which comes in on the Arduino as 0 to 1024. That's the number, that's the resolution of that display. So I take that A0 and divide it by 1024. Then I multiply it by 200. And that will give me the same ratio of, of whatever A0 is between 0 and 1024 and it will convert it to 0 to 200. And then that's the value that I'm going to write to the waveform. 
Now we're going to do something very similar to get the, the voltage to display because like I said the value is going to come in 0 to 10 24 and we want to display it as a voltage that we can read 0 to 5 but since we're showing it as a float we're going to have it go from 0 volts to 5 50,000 volts so we use that same math we analog read a0 we divide it by 10 24 and we multiply it times 50,000 now the voltage array I have it set up as a long so it doesn't understand um, floats. So just to make sure I get a good number, I'm going to cast that analog read to a float. So that way it'll be a nice long number. It'll give us a good value between 0 and 50,000. And then we have to figure out our volt minimum and our volt maximum. So every time through this we're going to reset it. So we're going to set our minimum to 50,000 and our maximum to 0. And then we're going to step through it. So we're going to count from 0 to 229 and we're going to check each one of those points and if at that point in the array we have a voltage that's less than the volt minimum we're going to change it to that and if we have one that's greater than the volt maximum we're going to change it to that and then after we've collected all our values we have our voltages we have everything our voltage mins and maxes then we can start putting it up to the next display since it's just one page we don't have anything global so we'll just be putting values up there and the first one we're going to write is the voltage minimum. We're going to take that x0.val and set it equal to the voltage minimum. But I have that x float with two less decimal points so I have to take that voltage minimum and divide it by 100. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the voltage maximum only it's in x1. That's the, the ID of that object. And Once again we have to divide it by 100. Now here's where that current position comes in because we want to show the value that we just read. So x2.val, we don't have to divide this by 100 because it has the four decimal places. So we're going to take the voltage array, the current position, turn it into a string, send it up, and it should show just fine in that bigger display. And now we have to write to the waveform. And it's just like it is on the nection. You have to put it just the same. If there's a space on the next command, there has to be a space in this. So it's add, space, and then the object ID, which is 1, the channel, which is 0, and then that volt in, which we have set between 0 and 200. And then we have to deal with our current position, because if, it, if it's greater than 229 or if it's hit 230, we want it to go back to 0. But if it hasn't hit in 229, we want to increment it. So we're using a ternary operator here. So if current position is greater than 229, set it to 0, else increment it by 1. And that's all there is to this. So I'm going to upload this, and I'll switch over to the camera, and I'll show it to you working. Okay, so now I have it up and on the screen, and you can see it's set to 2, two volts. I'm going to adjust this just a little bit. And you can see that as I adjust the potentiometer, the value goes up and down, and our min and max go up and down. So let me get a nice big swing on it. So now I'll leave it steady here at 2.15. Then as that as those peaks go off the screen, you should see it adjust back so that the minimum and maximum leave and come back to what it's set at. Uh, my camera's making a little square on there for some reason. But so now you can see that it's working like we would want. This was a relatively simple experiment, but it just shows you how easy it is to work with the Nexion without a library. So I'm hoping this video helps some people out. Sometimes simple is good. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up. And also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.